Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Especially when you're tense, slow down. You'll get to your destination only a short time later and in one piece. Sure is hot today, Mr. Dillon. Used to get hotter than sweet water, though. Sweet water? Texas? Bester? Uh, yeah, but I wasn't there very long. You weren't, huh? What'd you do there, Chester? Well, I was a salesman. Salesman? What'd you sell? Lightning rods. Oh, for that... Well, now, they're my good things to have around, Mr. Dillon. I remember... Don't one... blame it to me, Chester, please. It's much too hot. All right, so. I'll go get us some beer. I don't think I want any beer. Well, then, why don't you just go take a siesta, Mr. Dillon? I'll stay here in the office. Well, why don't you just leave me alone for a little while, huh? All right. <laughs> hey, uh, Matt. Oh, hello, Doc. What is it? Well, I, I thought I ought to tell you. A couple of cowboys have been feeding their liquor over at the Long Branch. Well, that's what saloons are for, isn't it? Well, they were giving Kitty a bad time. Oh? She got rid of them, though, but they're down at the end of Front Street now, and they're making remarks and pestering the town ladies. It just might lead to trouble. Oh, Doc, I'm not going to walk down there in this heat just to lecture a couple of hard-nosed cowboys. Well, I- I'll go, Mr. Dillon. Oh, all right, Chester, you go. Just tell them to take it easy and leave the ladies alone. Huh? Yes, sir, I will, Mr. Dillon. you like, but leave them ladies alone. That's a whole dang trouble with these Dodge ladies. They've been left alone too long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what they need is a couple of big-handed Texas men. Uh, look, now, uh, why don't you two go over there at this Lady Gay Saloon? I'll buy you both a beer. Oh, you will, huh? Well, that's mighty thought of you, mister. Yeah, well, we, we, we just don't want no trouble, that's all. Sure we don't, no, no. Uh, and I got me an idea how we won't have any. Now, wait till I get on my horse here. Uh, oh, you stay with our friend a minute, Trent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> say, mister, you want to make a bet? What kind of bet? W- w- what do you mean? Any kind. You name it, gone. Yeah, but now I don't. I got it. <laughs> Grab your horse, Trent. Yeah. Don't get this rope off of me, you hear? <laughs> Maybe it'll wear off, no. mister. You're going for a ride. Oh, no. Drag him, Stobo. Drag him. <laughs> Marshal? Uh, Marshal, they got Chester. What? Who got Chester? A couple of cowboys. They roped him and dragged him out of town. Which way? West. I'm going with you. Come on. Chester. Chester. 
Get that rope up its feet, Shiloh. Right, right. Look at him. He's bleeding all over. It tore him to ribbons. I'll, I'll stay with him, Marshal, if you like. No, go get our horses. I'll, I want to get him to dock right away. All right, Marshal. Uh-huh. It's all over, Chester. I got you now. We'll be at dock soon. shape, man. Something's bothering his breathing. I, I don't know what it is. We'll just have to wait and see if it goes away. If he lives the next few days, he'll pull through. Next few days? I'll stay right here with him. I, gotta, I don't know why I sent him. I, I could have gone on there. Oh, no, don't blame yourself, man. But I told him to go, didn't I? Yes. Can I talk to him, Doctor? No, not for a while. All right. And you tell him this for me. I'm going after those men. And I'm going to bring them back. Alive. Or at least half alive. In the street outside, waves of heat move back and forth, making things seem unreal. Like Chester lying up there at docks, that seemed unreal somehow. I walked down to the jail. I went inside and I sat there for a while. Then all at once I got up, unbuckled my gun, I hung it on a peg behind the desk, and I went over to the long branch. Hello, Matt. Kitty. I heard about Chester. How is he? That doc doesn't know for sure. Oh, Matt. They were in here earlier bothering you. Mm-hmm. Who were they, Kitty? I never saw them before, but one was a kind of weasel-faced man named Travis. And the other one? Big man. Real brute. Named Stobo, I think. I see. What outfit did they say? Would it be the crow track? Yeah, yeah. The crow track's holding a herd up the river. All right, thanks, Kitty. Wait a minute, Matt. Yeah? Where's your gun? It would have been easier for Chester if they'd shot him and killed him. But I don't... So I'm not going to shoot them. If Chester dies, I'll see him hanged. Otherwise... Otherwise what, Matt? Well, I don't know, Kitty. But I'm going to bring him back and then we'll wait and see. You're taking an awful chance. Maybe. Uh, Kitty. Yeah, Matt? Look in on Chester once in a while, huh? Of course I will. Don't worry about him, Matt. Thank you, Kitty. So long. Hey, Marshal. Yeah, what is it, Shiloh? Uh, I'll walk outside with you. Marshal, I, I want to ride after those cowboys with you. No, Shiloh, I'm going alone. But I could use you here at the jail. Here? I'm going to take two prisoners. I don't know when or how, but I need a jailer when they come in. Well, I can still help you bring them in. No, that's something i got to do alone. Marshal, you're a stubborn man. But okay, I'll do it. The keys are on the desk. Now, wait a minute, Marshal. You're not armed. Yeah, I know that, Shiloh. Goodbye. <laughs> Two riders I need. How's that? What do you want, mister? This is the Crow Track outfit, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I'm looking for a couple of your men called Stobo and Trevitt. They ain't here, mister. Now, where are they? Well, they come back this afternoon, picked up the gatherings, and they left. Didn't even wait to get paid off. And I'm telling you that just because they're no good, and I'm glad they're gone. Which way they go? I wouldn't tell you that if I knew, mister. I didn't 
think you would. Who are you, anyway? I'm a U.S. Marshal out of Dodge. Oh, that's so. Well, I don't know what you want him for, and I don't care, but just how you figuring to take him, Marshal? Gonna put salt on our tails? <laughs> but you'll all at least carry a club if you're going after that snowball. He's mean and he's big, besides being a Texan. We've hung Texans up here before, mister. Yeah. I heard Stobo and Trevitt say they was headed west, following the Arkansas. Where are you from, son? Texas, n- near Waco. And what are you sniveling around and forming on these men for? Well, that Stobo kicked me. He knocked me down and kicked me. All right, son. I'll ride along the Arkansas. But you ride back to Texas and learn how to fight your own battles. <laughs> I cut straight down to the Arkansas and followed it west. After an hour or two, I spotted a hobbled horse alone. Stubbo and Trevitt must have separated. I got down and followed the animal's tracks as best I could in the moonlight until I caught the dying coals of a campfire on the bank ahead. To one side, I could make out the huddled figure of a man asleep in his blanket. It took a long time to crawl to his head where I saw the weasel face of a man, Trevitt. His gun belt lay on the saddle blanket in easy reach. I stood up and I heaved it out into the river, and as Trevitt sat up with a snap, I kicked his back down. Hey, hey, don't shoot. Don't shoot. You'll sit up again, and I'll smash your skull. Don't Trevitt. kill me. Don't kill me. Shut up. Where's your rope? I told you to lie down. Now, where's your rope? Under my saddle you going to lynch me? No. But you may hang legally if you live that long. All right, keep your arms in that blanket and lie still while I get you roped up here. Who are you, mister? Now, let's just say that I'm a good friend of the man you dragged out of Dodge this morning. Stobo was in on that, too. It was his idea. He did it. Don't worry. I'll find Stobo. There. That'll do it. You ain't going to leave me like this. Now, Trevin, I'm going to throw you across my horse and tie you on. He'll take you into Dodge right to jail. When you get there, you tell Shiloh who you are, if he can still talk. He'll give you a nice, clean cell. Uh, Marshal. I'll be back when I find Stobo. Well, you can't do it, Marshal. I'll die in that sun. A ride like that across a horse? No, no, listen. Stobo's about a mile upriver. We had a row, and I left him. See, I told you, Marshal. Let me go now. Trevor, how'd you like to go to Dodge behind my horse with a rope around your heels? No, 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 don't, don't, Marshal, don't kill me. Don't worry, Trevor, killing's too good for you. Hi, this is Dennis James. Say, remember way back when this melody was popular? something very special about a long-time favorite, isn't there? Well, folks feel the same way about one of Kellogg's favorites, Kellogg's All Brand. Going on 41 years now, it's been America's most popular good food way to fight irregularity from lack of bulk. Because it's whole bran, Kellogg's All Brand gentles away irregularity safely and reliably. And because it's deep toasted for extra crispness, it never gets mushy in milk. There's only one all brand, Kellogg's All Brand. That's A double L hyphen B R A N. Kellogg's All Brand. I tied Trevor across my horse and started him off in the direction of Dodge, and then I forgot about him. Stobo was next. I rode west on Trevor's horse. Dawn was just breaking when I saw Stobo crouch behind a campfire cooking breakfast. His horse was saddled and stood nearby. I rode straight up, got down, and walked over. You lost, stranger? No, I'm not lost, Stobo. No tricks, mister. I don't 
Lots of your gun, but no tricks. Relax, Stobo. I'm unarmed. Who are you? Matt Dillon of the U.S. Marshal out of Dodge. Well, you're a long way from Dodge, Marshal. Stobo, you and your pal had some fun with a friend of mine yesterday. You hurt him bad. Maybe you killed him. You rode out here without a gun to tell me that? You're the craziest marshal I ever saw. I'm going to shoot you, Marshal, and bury you in the river. Now, what do you think of that? I expected you would. What? Unless you want it on your conscience that you refuse to feed a man on the trail, you better give me a piece of that pork first. <laughs> You're about the coolest man I ever saw, Marshal. How do I eat? Sure. Sure you do. <laughs> you just stand right there across the fire and don't move. I'll have to shoot you before you've been fit. I know. Too bad I only got one dish for your last meal, Marshal. A man can keep sassy on meat alone, Stubble. Yeah, <laughs> you sure can. <laughs> well, it looks about done. At least this here piece is... All right, I've got your gun, Stubble, so don't try anything. Burn me. You burn me. Just a few coals. It won't hurt you. Now shut up and get on your horse. Now move. I'll kill you for this, Marshal. You can't hurt me like that. On your horse. Come on now. Get up there. Get up there. Now you just sit there. I'm going to throw a noose around your neck, so keep your hands down. There. As soon as I get mounted, we're going to ride toward Dodge. And you do anything I don't like, and I'll jerk you off your horse and drag you the rest of the way. Shiloh, tell me. Doc ain't sure yet, but he's alive. Lock Stobo up. I'm going over to Doc's. Sure, Marshal. Chester was asleep, but Doc let me take a look at him. It seemed to me that he had more trouble breathing than before. Doc said another day he might see him out of it. And there was nothing I could do, so I... Went out for a steak and some sleep. The next morning, I went back to the jail. Morning, Marshal. Everything all right, Shiloh? Mm, Doc looked over your prisoners. Trevitt's pretty sick yet, but Stobo's all right. Got a few burns, is all. Nothing could hurt that moose. A uh, hanging might. Sure. What if Chester pulls through? You can't hold us in, Marshal. No law says I don't can. like the sound of your voice, Trevitt. But you Be can. quiet. Don't worry, Trevitt. There's nothing he can do. You too, Stobo. Shut the door, Shiloh. I don't even want to look at him. You know, that uh, Stobo is a mean one, but I feel kind of sorry for Trevitt. Now then why don't you go cry about it someplace else? I don't feel sorry. Now don't you take it out on me, Marshal. I didn't send Chester off to do my job. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry, Shiloh. Why don't you go get some breakfast? I'll, I'll wait here now. I'll be back later. Hello, Matt. Oh. What? Well, what is it, Doc? Chester. He's going to be all right. You sure? Of course, Matt. His breathing has changed. The pressure's off somewhere. Oh, he's going to be fine. Oh, that's good. Good. That's good. 
Well, of course, you'll be in some pain for a while yet. Yeah. All right, Doc. I, I'll, I'll come see him in a little while. Huh? I'll tell him that. Okay. All right, come on, Trevor. Where to? Come on, I said. What's up, Marshal? I'll be back for you, Stobo. Get going, Trevor. Well, Stobo did it, not me. You can't do anything to me. Shut up. Trevor, your horse is down at the National. You go get on it. You turning me loose? You go get your horse and ride, and don't ever come back to Dodge, not while I'm alive. Now go on before I change my mind. Sure. Sure, I'll go. You're next, Stobo. What'd you do with Trevitt? Put a knife on him? Turn him loose. Come on, get out of that cell. Am I free to? You will be in a little while. Marshal? Marshal, I, I just saw Doc, and he says it just... Hey, where you going with Stobo? And he shoot me in the back, probably. Right, Marshal? I'm going to do what I should have done three days ago when I sent Chester after you. Bring him out back, Shadow. Let's go, Stobo. Slow and easy now. Over here. You're going to drag me, is that it? Will you try that? That's what you would do, isn't it, Stobo? Well, don't you try... Never mind. Here, Shiloh. Oh, my gun. Look, Marshal, <laughs> don't... <laughs> you're going to fight me. Well, Marshal, you're crazy and I thought. Why, well, I'll tear your throat out. If he wins, let him go, Shiloh. Maybe I will. I said you'll let him go. All right, Marshal, all right. I guess this is your party. Come on, Marshal. I'll make it short for you. Real short. <laughs> you're big, Stobo. But you're stupid. You're ugly, stupid. Right. <laughs> All right, Marshal. Marshal. That's enough. Marshal. Come on. That's enough. All right. Give me my guns, Shallow. Here. He don't look too good, Marshal. I better get the dunk. He's hurt, but he isn't dead. If he can't ride, throw him on the stage, but get him out of here. If I see him again, I'll shoot him. Chester. Business done. My, what happened to you? and a couple of hard-nosed cowboys. One of them in particular. I see. I'm sorry, Mr. Dunn. Them two kind of got the drop on me. Yeah, they sure did. Mr. Dunn? Yeah. Mr. Dunn, I've been thinking. Of, and I, yeah, what is it? Mr. Dunn, I, I ain't much help to you here. Maybe it'd be better That's if I enough, just kindly... Well, I, I, I've been thinking... Well, you just stop thinking. Yes, sir. Chester, I'm going to tell you something. I need you here. You see, you're the only man in Dodge that I can really trust. The only one. Yes, sir. Well, you, you can... Trust me, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I know that. And I'm thanking you. But, uh... You know, you're sure no help to me lying there. You're no help to me at all. Well, I, I, I don't need to stay here long. Doc says I'll be up and around again for too long. Now, look, Chester. I 
I'll go get patched up, and then uh, we'll make Kitty come over and fix us some steaks, and we'll have some beer, too. Huh? What do you say? Uh, that'd be fine, Mr. Dillon. My, I, I sure would like that. Treat time again, and that means it's time to get a batch of colorful, wonderful Halloween pictures. But only with Flash can you catch those little neighborhood visitors when they come trick or treating, day or night. And you'll get them at their best so quickly, so easily, every time. Especially when you use Sylvania Blue Dot Flash Bulbs, the world's largest selling brand. Flash bulbs let you take indoor pictures in color, for instance, morning, noon, or night. And they let you take exciting shots after dark outdoors, too. And flash bulbs work with any film, anytime, anywhere, with any camera. So when all those little costumed visitors start ringing your doorbell, start snapping their pictures, and presto, you'll have a Halloween you can remember forever. Don't get caught with an empty flash gun. Be sure to pick up several packs of Sylvania Blue Dot flash bulbs the next time you're out shopping. And when you do, ask your dealer for Sylvania's free 32-page flash guidebook to help you take the best pictures ever. Remember... This year, be set for Halloween with lots of Sylvania Blue Dot flashbulbs. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Barney Phillips, Harry Bartell, Vic Perrin, Lawrence Dobkin, and Sam Edwards. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. 